Every four years, the entire world bonds over one extraordinary event. Yes, I'm talking about the Olympics. And representing the U.S. in women's gymnastics at the last Olympics in Rio was a group of young women dubbed the Final Five. And in that group of young women was a very special newcomer. It's Lori Hernandez of the United States. Now the effervescent Lori Hernandez. Lori Hernandez. The 16-year-old who wowed the crowds and the judges with her confidence, her skill, and her sass. She just gave the judges a little wink like, hey. Wow, that's awesome. In her final floor routine, Lori Hernandez took the floor and winked. Yes, winked at the Olympic judge. Then, when Lori took to the balance beam for the U.S. team final, the camera zoomed in on her face, showing her saying to herself, I got this, which became a huge meme. Lori took home a team gold. During the Olympics, Lori was given the nickname of the human emoji because of the funny faces that she would make and because of her incredible character. But if her quirkiness and her breathtaking performances during the Olympic Games weren't enough to make you love her, well, she danced her way to your heart as a participant on season 23 of Dancing with the Stars. Back to Dancing with the Stars, the winners, a new champion. And yes, she won that too. Lori and Val. This ambitious team now has her own Lori Hernandez emoji app, and she's released a memoir called I Got This to Gold and Beyond. We met up with her on the day her book launched. So we have a, a section in the book that we want you to read for us, if you don't mind. Of course. By sharing my story in this book, I want to encourage and dare you to go after your goals. I want to inspire you to do something you never thought was possible. You'll be amazed at how, by some grace, the path will clear for you. The message I gave myself on that life-changing summer day may have been, I got this. But the message I hope you hear in every line of this book is, you got this. So, you know, you're 16, right? And you're writing a memoir. And, so, <laughs> and yet you're also like, pretty, you're giving some pretty serious advice, right? Yeah, I think so. Was that the reason why you wanted to write the book? I wanted to write this book so that way I could inspire other people to go for goals and not be afraid of them. And, you know, kind of to show that all my hard work has paid off for something. It wasn't just handed down to me. And so kind of showing if you work hard enough, you can get where you want to go. The other thing that I pick up from you, and I've never met you, mm -hmm. right, is you kind of seem to be operating from a place of a lot of gratitude. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to be honest with you, it took me decades <laughs> to get to a place where I was like operating from gratitude. And yet you're 16 and you kind of got that. So talk to me about what that means and how you got there. Well, I think a big role really came from my parents because they taught me to appreciate everything. And also like my dance partner on Dance with the Stars, he taught me to also appreciate everyone and everything around me because I won't have it forever. But at the same time, I mean, there's one story in the book where in 2012 I was doing a competition. It was my first elite nationals. I was really excited and I completely trashed the whole competition. I fell multiple times. I was kind of sad because I wanted to do a lot better as an athlete. And my mom looked at me and she said, honey, why are you sad? This is your first time being here. People would love to compete here. Come on, we're going to go celebrate. And she bought me ice cream. So I think seeing that at such a young age made me realize that everything I do is very cool, very interesting and a new opportunity that may never happen again. So most athletes have certain rituals or a pep talk. Um, by the way, I'm totally from your team. I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> so walk us through the whole thing. At competitions, my stress levels go really high. And so just thinking it isn't enough for me. So I have to physically do things before competitions. Like I would take peppermint oil and I would smell it and it would like clear my head. And I'm constantly listening to music and the music is based on my mood. And it's so weird. But if I'm feeling very energetic, then I listen to sleep music. So that way I could calm down. And if I'm feeling tired, then I listen to fast, energetic music to bring me back up. And I'll pray before I go because I feel like that grounds me and really like lowers my heart rate. And Talk to me like when you're praying, what do you more or less? It's not, God, please help me make this routine. I'm really scared. It's more just um, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. I know you're there for me. Just calm my nerves. 
So what are some of your breathing techniques and where did you, um, did you create them on your own? Um, kind of. I mean, my mom is also a social worker, so she helped me out with this too, but I'd put my hand on my stomach and I would feel my stomach just kind of go in and out. And by focusing on that, I wasn't focused on my routines and being nervous. I was focused on my breathing that really calmed me down. So you got this nervous thing that you're controlling, but then you do these other things when you get out there, <laughs> like winking at the judges, uh, yeah. the Olympic judge. Very impressive. I think she just gave the judges a little wink. Like, hey. wow. Okay, so before that was before we competed floor at our team competition, and I looked at all my teammates and I was like, oh, oh boy, I'm really scared, guys. This is the Olympics. I, I'm nervous. I don't want to let anyone down. And they said, well, you know, it's once or twice in a lifetime that you go to the Olympics. You should go out there and just embrace the moment and cherish the moment because this could never happen again. And so I was like, you know what? You're right. This is great. I'm excited to compete. I can't wait to show the judges my routine. And I don't really know why, but I walked out there. I just found this courage. Right before I started my routine, I winked at the judges. And then afterwards, I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> but it was just, you know, being able to start a routine with confidence, ended in a routine with confidence. So part of what you wanted to show is your vulnerability, right? And so you write about that moment when you have this breakdown, right? What happened? Can you just describe the scene and how you got out of it? So basically, it was a couple months before Olympic trials and um, my routines weren't coming together at all. I... I was stressing out because the Olympics was this year and, you know, I had like a small knee strain and it was really like bothering me and it was affecting my workouts and my skills weren't coming as consistent as I wanted them to. And it was just a, a, a bucket load of stress. And so me and my family, we went out to eat and I just had like a, a breakdown and I was crying and I was like, I can't do it. This is too hard. And um, everyone was telling me like, no, you're right there. You worked your whole life for this. You're right there. Just uh, don't stop. And um, the poor waitress kept bringing over mounds and mounds of tissues and of paper towels. Is this where in New Jersey? This was in Jersey. Yeah. Long story short, we did, I went to Olympic trials, was able to make the team. We all went out to eat as a celebratory dinner and my sister handed me a goodie bag and handed me back the tissues and she was kind of... She actually she kept saved the, them? She kept the tissues and she kind of said, you know, this was a moment of you not believing in yourself, but we believed in you. And so that so was a very defining moment. What is it that is the push factor for you? I think it's more just looking at what will come, you know... At five years old, I wanted to go to the Olympics and I wanted to pursue this crazy dream at such a young age. And how should I explain it? I think it was the fact that I had this goal and I saw myself doing it and I knew I could do it. I knew that deep down if I work hard enough and progress enough to be at Olympic level. And if for some reason, you know, the Olympic Committee saw something in me that they thought I could help the team. I knew that I could help and be an Olympian, but it wasn't like I just automatically assumed I was going. And I think that's why I worked so hard. What do you want to do in the future? Because I see you being like a kind of clinical psychologist. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought of that, but who knows? I mean, I'm kind of just living in the moment right now. So this nickname, the human emoji, <laughs> and you smile, <laughs> great smile. So you're cool with it? Yeah, I like it. I mean, I think it suits me pretty well. Is that why you put an emoji onto each chapter of your book? Yes. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, any emotion that I'm thinking really appears on my face. We saw that. So, yeah. When you met Beyonce. Oh, yeah, that was really exciting. But you know what I love about that moment when we see your face? Is that you're looking at us like, I'm just like you. I'm freaking out. I just met Beyonce. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just, it's like I'm, I'm human also just because I had the opportunity to go to the Olympics and went Dancing with the Stars. It, it's not like I'm just superhuman. I'm a different breed. I'm also human like everyone else. And so that's why I felt like it was important to add pieces of me crying in the book because it shows that, you know, sometimes I am vulnerable and sometimes I need support from other people. And, you know, I can show that I fangirl. I show that I'm excited. I show that I cry. And, you know, these are all very human emotions. So we've been talking about a lot of fun things, but there's also a part of understanding that you're an American role model. Right? Thank you. But you're also very specifically a Latina mm -hmm. role model. Talk to me about how you process that. Does it come up to you or how you define yourself as a Latina, how that fits into who you are, or maybe it's not 
a big part of who you are. It's definitely a big part of who I am. I mean, I'm second generation Puerto Rican. My parents are Puerto Rican, both of them. And um, being able to kind of hand that down to me, my mom has always focused on cultures like dancing and singing. And I, I don't sing. My voice is pretty bad, but she encourages that. If you look at our 2016 women's gymnastics Olympic team, we're a very diverse group of girls. And I feel like that's very important because it shows that anyone can do anything. It doesn't matter who tells you what or what tries to stop you. So being able to do all of that at the same time, you know, I have a lot of families that kind of look at me and they say, you know, my daughter was inspired by you at the Olympics and started gymnastics because of you. And it kind of brings me back to, you know, the five-year-old me looking at a gymnast on TV and saying, I want to do gymnastics because of her. And because I saw, you know, that gymnast grace and beauty, it made me want to be like her and having that positive role model made me want to be a better person. So you yeah. got this. I get this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank, thank you so you. much, Lori.